Hi, good morning everyone from Wolfhaven Farm. We thought we'd give everybody an update on the money. So Mike is zooming in on uh, the bills. We've laid them all out. It's a total of $410 from what we can uh, piece apart. We've since learned that we should not have tried to take them apart, um, but we did take them apart to count them. There's three bills that are pretty whole that we're going to keep. The rest of the bills we're going to send into the Mutilated Currency Division of the U.S. Treasury. Uh, we did go to visit with a collector in Flagstaff a couple weeks ago, and because of the condition of the bills, it's not really worth anything. So we thought instead we would keep the three that are whole for ourselves, along with the newspaper clipping, and we would send the rest into the Mutilated Currency Division. All right, so by the magic of cameras, we've switched positions. Um, so yesterday, Mike and I went into the Coconino County Courthouse, of, uh, the Court of Records in Flagstaff, and we went in to see if we could trace back who owned the property in 1934. And the way that this all worked is online, all of the records were computerized in 1981. So we could get back as far as 1981 through the online records but then the rest of the records are either in hard books or in microfiche. So they took us into this room, which quite honestly was amazing and I could have stayed in there for days, but it's the records from 1891 to 1981, handwritten records of every deed, easement, permit, etc., that has been recorded in Coconino County. So the history is incredible. So we were pulling books off the wall that had the recorder Hand, handwritten recordings from 1906 and 1900 and it was just it was super cool so we we both nerded out quite a bit on the history in the room but anyway so as luck would have it um, they put all the records online October 1st of 1981 we could trace back who purchased this property in October of 1981 the records then start, the hard records start September 1981 back to 1891. And so we couldn't find online the leap between who owned it October 1st, 1981, and who owned it in September of 1981. And that was the leap we needed to make. And so it's just luck would have it that the records happened at the same time that the transition seemed to have happened. So we took a best guess at it and we started looking back as to who we believed owned the property then. We were not able to find their information anywhere in any of the books that we went through. And you can look by both grantor and grantee. And so we went through all of those books trying to find the family name and couldn't find it. So then we shifted focus. So this whole area we know was run, um, had a lot of sheep herders in the area. And we also know the logging companies were out here in the early 1900s. And up the street is a street named, named Poquette, and we had been told that this area was owned by the Poquettes. And so we started looking for that name, and we found a lot of that name through all of the books, but we didn't find this specific piece of property. We found everything that's across the road. So it's all down by section number, township number, corner number. So there's a, in the legal description on any property is where you have to start. And so we figured out the legal description. We figured out those four or five components that we really needed to look up. And that, that's what we started looking up. So we could find where they own tracks 23, 25, 27, and we're in 26. So clearly they owned across the street, which is where Poquette Street is, is across the street. So then we thought, well, our property is the first property, when you're coming down 64, we're the first property that still has 80 and 100 foot pine trees on it. And we were told it's because the logging companies basically stopped at the edge of our property and they, they didn't log any further. And so we started looking up the logging company information. The logging mills went out of business in Williams in the early 1900s and so it's previous to our time period that we're looking for, but it may still give us some information. While doing all this research, I also stumbled upon a mass master thesis document that a gentleman wrote in 1952 to receive his master's degree from the University of Arizona, and his he was a history major, and he wrote his thesis on Williams, Arizona. And so we started reading his thesis, which was extremely well written and extremely well detailed at the time. 
And so we found out that also during that time frame was when the Hoover Dam was finished. So this is Great Depression, if you think about 1934. The Hoover Dam has been completed and all those civil engineers now need jobs. And so they, a lot of them went and worked for the CCC. Um, and a lot of that was in this area. So there's also potentially that some engineers were out in this region. And this gentleman wrote about that as well as part of his, his thesis paper. So we've got a couple angles to go after. Um, we found a couple more names that were connected to the Poquettes. We found four or five other sheep herding families or companies that we can look for. The Bebets were another one. They owned a great deal of this area. Um, they owned uh, buildings in town. They also owned sheep herding. They also had an industry set up. So we found them. We found the ASOs, also sheep herders. And so we're going to now dig into more of the history of the area, dig into the sheep herders of the area, dig into the lumber mills and see if we can come up with some additional names that we could look up to see if we can isolate more who own this property in 34. There is a, a chance that this property actually was still owned by the state. So we did, as we were going through the books, look up um, in the state of Arizona or Arizona State or Coconino County had transferred the deed to an individual. We weren't able to find anything on that yet as well. But that's another avenue we're going to keep exploring. But we had exceeded our time, so they give you two hours um, in the vault, they call it, where all these great, amazing old books are. There are plot maps. I mean, it was incredible. We could have stayed in there for days. Um, but we, we needed to leave because we had exceeded our time limit. So we're going to do a little more research on our own, and then we're going to book another two hours and go back to the county courthouse and see what else we can find. But that's the update for now. We will let you know when all of this gets accepted by the Mutilated Currency Division and what they have to say, and we'll just we'll keep you posted. So thanks for joining us. Have a great day.